You know better. You should know better than this. You, you want to know some other words that aren't in your Bible? How about Bible? What are you doing using that word? Why are you talking about stuff not being in the Bible when the word Bible isn't even in the Bible? <laughs> All right, let's look. take a look at another one. So that kind of answers some stuff from Kara, but what about Alex? Remember Alex? So he had some things to say as well. Under the Unitarian um, video, he went ahead and, and came up with his own five things Jesus never said, he says. So uh, he said, number one, I am God. Number two, worship me. Number three, God is three. Trinity, misspelled there as Trinity, is not even a word in your Bible. Where it's, Well, it's not a word really anywhere, but uh, I know what you meant. Number four, I was around before Abraham. And number five, you have to honor me to enter heaven. Thought you could do better, Andrew? I, I don't know if that's part of number five. I, I doubt it. But um, <laughs> this, I mean, you know, Kara struggled. Alex is... is Kara, Alex makes Kara look pretty, pretty darn um, well versed in these these topics. So number one, I am God. Well, we kind of discussed that already. He very, very well did claim to be God in in more than one way, um, and it doesn't have to conform to this language. He doesn't have to say, you know, I am God in in those three words only, and that's the only way he could ever claim to be God. Um, that that's just silly. Uh, and and what I said, notice that, that what he says, I can refute. What I said, he can't refute because there's no text anywhere from Jesus or anyone else that says Jesus is not God or Jesus saying, I am not God. No, nothing, nothing equivalent anywhere in the Bible. You won't find it. Number two, worship me. So unlike Kara, who didn't want to throw up the opposite of my statement, my statement was don't worship me. Um, he, he didn't see a problem with just jumping in head first. I mean, she, she at least saw, well, people did worship Jesus. So I'm going to go, you know, somewhere else. I'm not going to directly try to contradict what, what Andrew said there. Uh, Alex is cool with it. You know, yeah, Jesus never said worship me. Well, uh, again, we, we saw that in, in John chapter five, he most certainly did. He, he talks about honoring the son, just as you honor the father and, and, how does how do you do that, Alex? How do you honor the Son just as you honor the Father? Um, it just doesn't work, and and that's in the wider context of John chapter five, even more apparent because you know the the whole question is whether Jesus is equal to the Father, and Jesus makes it very clear that he is. Um, so yeah, I guess he did command people to uh, honor him. Another word for worship, uh, just as he honor the Father. Uh, number three, God is three. Trinity is not even a word in your Bible. Well, remember, mine was God is only one person. Again, never anywhere in the Bible. Now, when I see this, you know, God is three stuff and Trinity is not in your Bible. I mean, I really know I'm dealing with a lightweight when it comes to this this stuff. And Alex, I mean, you know, you know better. You should know better than this. You, you want to know some other words that aren't in your Bible? How about Bible? What are you doing using that word? Why are you talking about stuff not being in the Bible when the word Bible isn't even in the Bible? <laughs> oh, what about, as I, as I said before in the video, what about monotheism? You know, oh, I guess the Bible must not teach Jesus or must not teach monotheism because the word monotheism isn't in the Bible. I mean, it's, it's so easy to refute that argument. I am, when I see someone using it, I know they don't care about the truth. They don't care about knowing you know, about actually getting to the bottom of what, what the scripture says. Or how about this one? Um, you know, the word Tanakh. Uh, do you like that word? Do you use that word? Because that's also not in the Bible. Um, do you Hebrew roots teachers like to use the word Tanakh? Because it's not there. It's not in the Bible. I mean, and if, if you're not familiar with Tanakh, Tanakh is a word based on an acronym for the Hebrew words. Um, Torah, Nevi'im, and Ketuvim, which mean the Law, the Prophets, and, and the Writings. You know that the, this threefold um, division of the Old Testament. So it's a common word used by Jews today to refer to the Scriptures. They might refer to the Hebrew Bible or the Tanakh, 
Um, it's, it's a fine word. I have no problem with people using it. Uh, I, unlike Alex, don't use silly arguments like a word isn't in the Bible, so you shouldn't use it. But if you're going to use that argument, then I, I better not hear you ever saying a word like Tanakh or monotheism or Bible. Um, but yeah, you, that's just, it's just lazy reasoning. So let's move on. Number four, I was around before Abraham. Well, Jesus actually said, before Abraham came to be, I am. So that was easy. I mean, are you even trying? Number five, you have to honor me to enter heaven. <laughs> so we just looked at that verse. Um, I mean, Jesus literally said, if you don't honor me, then you don't have the father. I'm sorry, but do you think that you can get to heaven without the father, Alex? I'm confused. Uh, it, you, your statements don't actually make any sense together. So uh, he thinks I could do better. I really don't, don't think Alex could do worse. So moving on. All right. So we come now to Jay Nastali, the, the gentleman who I, I'm guessing gentleman. I don't really know. Letter J. <laughs> so the person who said um, that's an argument from silence. So we address that part. So the way he approaches it is instead of coming up with his own pithy version of five things Jesus never said, he attempts to actually address what what I said. Um, let's go ahead and, and take a look at these. So number one, so he's, he's addressing what I said. Number one, this is on the Hebrew Roots edition. He says, is it a stretch to think that Jesus introduced himself by his God-given, angel-announced, stepfather-pronounced name, Yeshua? Is it a stretch to think that he never referred to himself as Yeshua, his name, as his circumcision, his Jewish name, his temple name? So, no, I mean, as I've said, he, of course, he most certainly did say his name and introduce himself with his name. Um, my point is that, again, wasn't that he, he said, he never said, my name is, he said, he never said, call me Yeshua with only that pronunciation. Don't say Jesus like the Greek speakers over there. He never said that. And that was my point. Um, if, if you can't even see that point, um, it shows that you're not really, you know, dealing with these issues. You're just kind of, uh, regurgitating things that you've heard. Uh, number two says, you have supported your claims using Hebrew on your channel. Why is that? Is it because it lends itself to a clearer understanding of the intent of the message? Um, no, it isn't. Um, I've supported my claims using Hebrew, but not because it lends a clearer understanding, but because it, the original was written in that language um, in certain cases, if I'm talking about the Old Testament. Um, but when a passage is in the Greek, I use the Greek. Um, and it's not because the original language is more clear, it's because it's the original language. And, you know, so, yeah, it, I, it, you're missing the point again. Um, there's, I don't know, you know, it's, again, it's kind of a thing with, with Hebrew roots folks that they think that Hebrew is this sort of magical language that, that uh, has, has all these properties that it, that it just, just doesn't have. Um, all right, number three, he says, I'll grant you that one. That's the one about the made-up Hebrew. And glad we're on the same page about the made-up Hebrew. Uh, number four, Matthew 12, 1 through 12. Please read all of it. This is where Jesus claims to be the Lord of the Sabbath. Jesus was teaching his followers the proper way to keep the Sabbath. He taught allowing for life is not breaking the Sabbath. He is and continues to be Lord of the Sabbath. This is the appointed time when he meets with us weekly. Brothers and sisters, if you are not doing this, you are missing a big blessing. Because he is, Greek, present tense, and timeless, Lord of the Sabbath. When it comes to claims Jesus made about himself, most Christians agree that the state of being verbs are timeless because he is referring, inferring lordship slash his God nature but maybe you disagree on what the definition of is is. Yeah, um, so yes, I do believe Jesus is God. Um, we've, we've kind of uh, covered that. I have done a couple of pretty detailed discussions of the Sabbath and Jesus. Um, what Nastali says here about Jesus' God nature making him Lord of the Sabbath, I agree with. 
Um, he says to read Matthew 12, which I've done. Uh, in fact, I would challenge him to go back and take a look at my episode on everything Jesus taught about the Sabbath. We talk about Matthew 12 and we talk about all of the other times that Jesus talks about the Sabbath. Um, and I've made a pretty extensive case that Jesus and the apostles believed the fulfilled Sabbath was to be found in faith in Christ. Um, the Sabbath is still real. Jesus is still Lord of the Sabbath. Um, but it looks different now because of, uh, he has come. Um, so it's, it's now observed instead of weekly, it's observed daily in faith. Um, and again, my point with statement four in the video, you know, in statement four, I said, you know, Jesus never said rest on the seventh day because, because he never did. And in fact, nowhere in the new Testament, do you, do you see that? And that's telling. It's the only commandment of the Decalogue, the, the Ten Commandments, that he doesn't reaffirm or enhance. Um, that's that's a big deal. That that should you know merit some study and some some consideration. And in fact, every time he talks uh, that Jesus and the Sabbath are, are together in the Gospels, it's it's controversy every single time. Um, so again, it, it's. I would tell you not just read one passage, but read all the passages that where Jesus deals with the Sabbath and and try to figure out why it is that, you know, all these controversies are happening around Jesus and the Sabbath and not one time. Here's something else Jesus never said. Um, your Sabbath traditions are not from the Torah. He never said that either. He never defended his behavior on the Sabbath by attacking, you know, extra biblical tradition. Um, a lot of people think, you know, just kind of assume that he was doing that. Um, but read the text carefully. He never mentions tradition. He never. He always just asks questions and points out things that are more important than the Sabbath is what, what he ends up doing. So it's important to read. All right. Number five. Um, Jane Nostali says, what exactly do you believe on the divinity of Jesus? Do you believe that Jesus and the Father are one nature? Jesus doesn't disagree with, disagree with things the Father teaches, does he? Jesus followed his Father's teachings. Jesus taught his Father's teachings. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Jesus kept all of the feast days. That's a good enough reason. So, yes, Jesus is God, truly God. And he doesn't disagree with the Father. In fact, I believe the person Moses interacted with when receiving the law was the Son. Um, so you can't pin on me any kind of straw man that I think the Son came to contradict the will of the Father. Um, rather, the commandments given to Moses serve many purposes, all of which would go on for many generations after Moses, but not all of them were truly eternal in the sense that God would never do anything to change that law. God doesn't change, but it is trivially true and simple to prove that not every command God issues holds fast forever and never changes. Um, some do, but not all. Um, you know, God, the question I would ask is, did God command the Exodus generation to enter the promised land? Clearly, yes, and clearly, no. Clearly, yes, when they were first being brought there, and then when they acted faithlessly and believed the bad report and said, we can't do it, then God said, you're going to wander in the wilderness for a generation, and you'll all die in the wilderness, um, all of the adults. And some men said, oh, we've sinned. Let's go and now and take the land. And God said, no, you're... You, you've received the judgment, now you may not enter the land. And then guess what? They were supposed to enter the land again later. So yes, God changes his commandments at times. Um, that's up to God. And since Jesus is God, it's up to Jesus. Jesus is the Lord of not only the Sabbath, but the whole Torah. So um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it, it's pretty simple to understand um, when you're, again, when you're not just 
pushing a, a certain a certain perspective. All right. Now, next, I got one from a Muslim, and it was about as shallow as you would expect. Um, I have answered, you know, the silly anti-Trinitarian stuff uh, he presents elsewhere, um, but I'll gladly read to you the commenter, and I'll, I'll just read you my response. Uh, this one I did interact with in the comments, and just kind of leave it at that. So the, the Muslim asks, um, he says, uh, Acts fourteen fifteen. Friends, why are you doing this? We too are only human like you. We are bringing you good news, telling you to turn from these worthless things to the ever-living God who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. And that's the quote from the scriptures. But then he goes on. If our God is the ever-living God and Jesus died for our sin, how can we say Jesus is God? If you say the ever-living God died... That means you believe in something that don't exist like square circle or a married bachelor. And if you say, no, there is another being besides the ever-living God who is called Jesus. He can die, but he is equal to the ever-living God. That means you are a polytheist without shadow of a doubt. And polytheists are condemned to hell. Certainly Allah's only way is Islam. Those who were given the scripture did not dispute among themselves out of mutual envy until knowledge came to them. Whoever denies Allah's signs, then surely Allah is swift in reckoning. Allah, there is no deity except him, the ever-living, the self-sustaining. So here was my response. Um, pretty simple. Um, it just said, thanks. You just reminded me I should do an Islam edition. By the way, does the Quran allow Muslims to marry Christians? If Christians are polytheists, as you allege, then no. But then it says you can. So, oops. Um, and yes, so the, the Quran says it's a, it's a pretty simple contradiction. Um, I thank uh, Anthony Rogers' uh, recent, one of his recent uh, videos. You should definitely check out his channel uh, for... Um, showing me that one because I'm, I'm not an expert on, on Islam at all. But um, one of the easiest things to see in the Quran is a contradiction is that the Quran says Christians are polytheists while also saying you cannot marry polytheists, but you can marry Christians. So, you know, how do you put all that together? Uh, you can't. So, <laughs> um, but then finally, I will show you one more. This is from Kara once more, and this is on the socialism edition of the five things Jesus never said. She says, are you trying to be immature? <laughs> you know, sometimes you can tell when someone just doesn't like you. Uh, mature people care about substance, and so if they don't have anything important to say on a subject in response to someone they don't like, they usually just ignore it and move on. That's what mature people do. Um, I think it's an important lesson. And so I thought I'd share this one last comment with you. Kara, on the other hand, couldn't come up with anything to disagree with on the socialism video, So, but she still doesn't like me. But she didn't ignore it, and she didn't move on. You know, like mature people do. There's a lesson there, I think. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, definitely check out, you know, Lots of links in the description for, for different content and series and things that I have going on. Um, Christian, uh, the Christian approach to the law. Um, right now I'm working on a deep dive through Hebrews. So if you haven't subscribed, you'll want to check that out as well. Um, um, coming up, uh, it, now is a good time to get started on that. Watch the previous ones uh, because the next one we're going to be talking about Hebrews chapter 8. And we're going to be talking about the New Covenant, so that'll be interesting there. But anyway, I hope this has blessed you and helped you and taught you some things about how to respond to some silliness on the Internet. Um, anyway, God bless, and I'll see you in the next one.